。观众朋友们，大家好，欢迎收看本周的搜狗 trade 对话华尔街。美联储的第二轮量性宽松政策将会在六月底完成。美联储在本周三结束最新的议息会议中，已经明确表示不会再有第三轮的量性宽松。美国经济开始进入了后量性宽松的时代，而近期美国的经济数据却显示出了美国经济增长的疲软现象。而由于美国政府的债务问题，美国已经无力再做出大规模的财政刺激计划。现在，美国经济复苏的重任也就完全压在了美联储的货币政策上。那么，量性宽松结束以后，美联储能用怎样的方法来继续提振美国经济？是否会继续的印钞票？第二轮量性宽松中多印的钞票又是否会对美国甚至全球造成任何的风险？本周我们请到了美女经济学家 Sandra Navidi 跟我们一起探讨。Sandra Navidi， 科隆大学法学学士，福德姆大学金融法学硕士，曾担任多家知名投资银行顾问。并作为 IMF、世界银行等大型国际机构的经济论坛成员，曾作为美国著名经济学家，准确预测了金融危机的纽约大学教授卢比尼团队的经济策略主管，现担任 Beyond Global 公司 CEO。Hi Sandra, how are you? Very well, thank you. Very glad to have you here on our show for the first time.、Uh, let me start with this. As the QE2 will complete by the end of this month, do you think there will be QE3? Because we got the different opinions from different people, like fund manager and business owners. Everybody thinks differently.、Uh, but according to Mr. Bernanke, he thinks that there won't be any QE3 ahead. So, what is your、uh, take on that? Signs are increasing that there will be a QE3. We have a political economy, and there are elections next year in 2012. The Federal Reserve is supposed to think more long term and make long term decisions, but in in the end, probably political pressures will prevail. The economy or、uh, the growth is has been moderate; it hasn't really taken off, and so there are no other policy options other than printing more money.、Uh, if there's no QE3, what kind of method can the That to imply to stimulate the economy because according to the current e- economic data, the economy still、uh, is not on the track. Well, it can refrain from raising interest rates. It can abstain from reducing the money supply in the system. But then, the, the Federal Reserve has two mandates. One is to warrant price stability, and the other one is m- maximum employment. But at the end of the day, we have seen a great deal of intervening by the Federal Reserve, and we're coming to a point where we're ha- where we have to ask what is covered by the democracy principle, because it is not an elected institution,、mm-hmm. and it doesn't have any procedural checks and balances that democratic institutions usually have. And we see a lot of、uh, opposition in the. A population with a Tea Party movement, so I think it's I- undisputed that the Fed had to step in at the height of the crisis to、uh, prevent the system falling off a cliff.、Mm-hmm. But now th- it keeps on going and going, and people, savers especially, feel they're being punished because their savings are decreased in value by by the printing more money. Right.、Uh, some economists argue that the Fed could cut or even outright eliminate. Interest payment on excess bank reserve as way to get financial institutions to lend more. Do you think that will be an option? Fed will imply. Well, it should probably help. the The fact of the matter is that banks got a lot of money through the printing,、mm-hmm. and it hasn't really seeped through to the real economy, to the people. But on the other hand, there has been less demand. So, first of all, banks don't really want to lend because、mm-hmm. they get cheap money that they can employ in higher yielding investment opportunities like commodities or in emerging markets. On the other hand, people and companies are deleveraging. They're seeking to reduce the the level of debt. They don't want to take on more debt, and also. So an aggravating factor is that because the outlook for the U.S. economy is so weak, people are very hesitant to take out loans and start businesses or grow their businesses. So, so these two points are a decisive factor. On the other hand, you don't want to put too much pressure on banks to lend because then they will lower their lending standards and lend to less creditworthy borrowers, which is a danger to the system and it、right. could aggravate another crisis. And also, eventually, if if Um, reserves aggregate too much, or if you throw too much money into the real economy at once, it could、um, cause inflation. Right.
Uh, I was reading a very interesting article that it says that the Austrian school economists have often argued that money printing will lead to unpredictable and uncontrollable effects. Do you think there will be some risks uh, caused by the quantitative easing this round? Well, yes, there are mostly two un uh, unintended consequences. One is inflation and one is bubbles. In the U.S., we currently don't see a high level in, of inflation, and that is because even though there was a lot of money created by you know, pushing a computer button, right. it hasn't really made it into the system because banks didn't lend, people didn't take out loans, so the velocity of money has been rather low. But on the other hand, all this money is seeking investment opportunities that don't really exist in the United States because the growth is so low. So it, it, it's being invested into commodities and in emerging markets, there it, it force feeds growth and it creates bubbles and also the, um, the inflow and outflow suddenly into these economies has a destabilizing eff an effect for them. Mm. Uh, also another article from CNBC, the commentator John Carney, he says that monetary policy can only have a stimulating effect if the uh, rise in price or fall in interest rate is Unexpected, unexpected or misunderstood. I'm not quite understand this uh, comment. Just can you help me out a little bit here? Well, I think what he means is that um, policymakers intervene too much in in the real economy, and that if basically it's not a question of supply and demand, but it's a bet on what policymakers will do. So now mm -hmm. everybody's waiting for what the Fed is going to do or how the ECB is going to react. And people are betting on you know, what they hear on information. And it's not so much about what's really going on in the economy. So although money was printed, but the real economy hasn't been helped. No, the real economy hasn't been helped. But what happened before the crisis was that 70% of the GDP was made up of consumer spending. And that has fallen off a cliff since the crisis. And there has not been any growth engine that could make up for the U.S. consumer. There are no industry, there have no industries come up who can make up for that. So there's a lack in growth. And people are very you know, suspicious and negative on the economy. They're very worried. They don't want to employ money here. And so I think one of the worries is, is that if you print so much money, essentially money is supposed to be a store for value, especially for labor rendered. And people understand if you print a lot more money without any corresponding value, the money that you have is going to be reduced in value. Yeah. Uh, all the money of people here, but also of people who hold mm. U.S. Treasuries, for instance. Of course. It, it is a problem. And in the relationship between China and the U.S., uh, we have a relationship that Larry Summers called uh, a balance of terror, right. uh, which is a term from the Cold War, mutually assured destruction. It's like a forced marriage, and you can't divorce overnight. Right. Uh, I, my, my sense is that China will try to diversify away from the dollar, right. but it'll take time. Uh, there is no other reserve currency, but over several years, probably, they will try to move away from it. Last question is, uh, we know, uh, except the U.S., all over the world is uh, fighting for inflation. China just got the CPI number 5.5%, which is uh, very high. And ECB's raising interest rates, bank, uh, People Bank of China's raising interest rate, and all the emerging markets, their central banks are raising interest rate. Only Federal Reserve is keeping the interest rate artificially low. So do you think this imbalance between Federal Reserve and other central banks will cause some sort of problem? Yes, I think in this global economy and the intertwined financial systems, all local actions have global consequences. And so the U.S. actions will help keep the dollar low, which is good for U.S. exports. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it pumps more money into commodities. Money will go to emerging markets, so it's flowing out of this country. That's not helping. Also, it influences the currency, the exchange rates of currencies, and all. Cur so the dollar is going lower, but all currencies are in a relationship to each other. They mm -hmm. all fall and rise relative t to yeah. each other. They can't all fall. Yet we see right now a race to the bottom because everybody wants to have a low currency because it's good for their exports. Right. Okay. Thank you very much for your opinions. 好的，感谢您收看本周的搜狗趣味对话华尔街节目，我们下周再见。